Hey guys, I'm Max from Walkers of Star, and today we're going to be taking a look at the TIG 200P PFC. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the setup in standard DC TIG. We'll then cover pulse TIG and the MMA functions in future videos. So let's dive straight in and take a closer look at this machine. Okay, so you've got three different modes of welding in this machine. You've got DC pulse TIG, you've got MMA welding, and then you've also got standard DC TIG, which is what we're going to be covering now. Uh, you've then got three different tr uh, trigger settings. So you've got two touch, you've got four touch trigger, and you've got spot weld time. Um, we're going to be using standard two touch trigger control today, which is press the trigger to strike the arc, you then keep hold of the trigger, and when you want to stop the weld, you simply release the trigger uh, and the arc will extinguish. You then want to go through the various parameters that you can adjust within the TIG process. So the first one that you come to is pre-flow gas. That's the amount of gas flow in seconds before the arc actually strikes. So here we've got 0.5 seconds, so that means half a second of gas flow before the arc actually strikes. You then want to set your start current. This is the, the amperage that the machine will strike at. So here we've got it at 50 amps. If you then set a slow pin time, this determines the time it takes for the machine to get from your start current up to your peak welding current. So this can be adjusted as you require. If you don't want to use this function, simply set it to zero and it will skip this step and go straight into your peak welding current. Now your peak welding current is your main welding setting. So this is the setting that the machine will weld at for the majority of the time. Uh, and it should be adjusted based on the material thickness that you're welding, but also the type of material you're welding. Uh, I would recommend probably 30 to 35 amps per millimeter thickness of material. Um, so for example, if, you, if you're welding some 3, three mil steel, you want to set it at about 90 to 95 or 100 amps, something like that, something around there. Um, you've then got your slope out time and your finish current. Uh, this is the time taken to get from your peak welding current down to your finish current. Um, this will only work once you've actually released the trigger uh, itself. So what will happen is, once you release the trigger, it will go from your peak welding current of 100 amps, and then over a period of time that you decide, so here we've got it at 3 seconds, the amps will gradually reduce down to meet the finish current. Here we've got 50 amps as our finish current, um, and then the arc will obviously extinguish once the slope out time has expired. Now, once the arc actually extinguishes itself, it will go through its post-flow gas phase. Um, this is the amount of gas flow after the arc stops, and this is measured in seconds as well. So there we've only got one second of post-flow gas, um, but this should be adjusted based on the amperage you're using. So the more amps you use, the more heat you're going to put into the material, and the hotter the tungsten will get. And so as a result, you'll need a longer post-flow gas to ensure that both the material and the tungsten are kept clean in the argon gas um, at the end of the weld. So guys, we hope you found this guide useful. For more videos and content like this, please check the links in the description below. And thanks for watching the video.